Hi, welcome to Organizing Elephants. We're on Radnor Studio 21, and um, I am so excited today to have our guest, Christine Nass, and I'm looking at your title because it's a long one. I just want to make sure I get it right. It's Assistant Director of Music Activities at the Villanova University right in our area. So I'm excited to have her here. We're going to be talking, as we always do, about strategies for busy women who are keeping it all together. And that's what we talk about on Organizing Elephants. And um, you know, if you've wondered why we call it this, it's that old story. You've heard it before, Christine. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, so we're not eating elephants today, we're organizing them, but um, let's talk about what, what you do at Villanova University. Can you give us just a little background on your, um, on your, your job, your day-to-day your -day routine? You've got a lot going on there in the music department. We do. So um, music activities at Villanova is kind of a misnomer. We, um, we have groups across the performing arts. There are theater groups, there are dance groups, and of course musical groups. Um, we have about 30 groups in those different areas that three of us manage right now. Um, there Wait, 30 groups and three of you three, managing Three it. staff members. That's a lot going on. Yes, it is. A lot of balls in the air, <laughs> a lot of things to keep organized, right? And when you consider one of them is the band with over 60 performances a year, can, including athletic events, it's, it's uh, overwhelming at times, yes. um, but the, the students are great. They're mostly organized, and uh, for a lot of these groups, the ball's been rolling for many years that they can, they're student-run organizations when they're not busy, um, and uh, they come to us for support, advice, and money. So. Um, the students mostly run their own thing, but we have the purse strings, but also the professional advice for them. Right, and you're, so you're actually teaching and you're helping these young people learn how to organize groups and get things mm -hmm. done. Yes, yeah. and uh, I, do, I sometimes teach at Villanova too. I'm an adjunct faculty member, mm -hmm. but I also conduct the women's choir, which was my primary which was the primary draw for getting me into the organization. Right. Um, I had done a lot of odd jobs around Villanova before that, including computer programming, web development, um, database management, all for the music department. And uh, from there, I started conducting the women, which I was qualified for. I just wasn't doing it at right. Villanova. And they then asked me to be full time at the point at which somebody retired. Yeah. So, so I love that story because, um, as so many of us do, I, I think everybody, but so many women, especially, you know, we kind of have to do something for a while so that we can work our way into mm -hmm. doing the thing that we really love, right? So yeah. we don't always get our dream job right out of the gate. That's very true. Yeah. So, and you know, for me, I'm a professional singer. So I sing with Opera Philadelphia, where I've been for over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was, that was the ideal job. I wanted to be an opera singer. My husband and I are both professional singers, and we met there. And, uh, you know, pursuing the dream turns out that the reality is, is that's not really a dream job yeah. because of travel and commitment and work ethic and the things you need to do to maintain that. It's really hard to have a family. Yeah. So most of us, certainly starting out as singers, have to find other things to fill in the gaps. Yeah. And mine turned into another career, which was in my field, yeah. surprisingly, which is so hard for right. a lot of my singing colleagues. So that is, again, just I, you know, when we're young, we think, oh, this is the dream, and I want to travel, and I mm -hmm. want to, you know, I just want to sing, I want to do my art, and um, be a creative person. And at some point, you often figure out how to make the business of the business work, mm -hmm. or the business of the creative endeavor. And you actually um, have gone into kind of both the business and the education mm -hmm. um, world so that you can you can make that work. Yeah, and I do, I have a music ed degree, like mm -hmm. a lot of people do. I, I have a few undergraduate degrees, um, but I had 
a performance degree and music ed. So in my head, I, I knew I, I always knew I was good at teaching, mm -hmm. and perhaps it is a calling, but I continually ran away from that calling. Mm -hmm. But every single job I had as a, someone in my 20s always drew me back into teaching. Right. I was teaching Microsoft Office applications. I was teaching all sorts of different things, including music. Right. Um, and I kept getting, as far as I tried to run away from it, I kept getting slammed back into the profession of teaching in right. one way or another. Well, good, and I'm mm -hmm. glad you're, I'm sure your, your, your kids, your students are glad of that yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanna, um, something that I wanted to ask you up front in the show, because I think um, this comes up a lot when we're organizing um, people, especially professional people, you know, high performing, a lot of people who are just busy and getting a lot of things done like you are. Um, the idea of creative people can't be organized. Uh, I want to ask you about that because I personally think that's a myth and you know one of the things that I hope is when people are watching this show all eight of them maybe <laughs> but you know 80, 80 800 as we grow the show um, no but seriously as um, as people are watching this I want them to be thinking sort of oh you know I'm creative and so I these organizing things you know, could work for me because Christine is telling me she's also creative. Mm -hmm. And, um, but kind of balance that against another conversation that I was having with a friend this week. And I said to her, you know, you're very organized. You get a lot done. She's a CEO of a company. And she looked at me and she said, oh, I'm glad you think so because I don't feel very organized a lot of the time. And I said, no, that's the sign that you are in fact getting all these things done. So I think kind of balancing, talk about for us this idea that you're creative, you got a lot going on, and there's a lot of days when you don't feel like you have enough <laughs> being accomplished, right? Am I hitting anywhere oh, close to home? Oh, absolutely. So I, for me, um, I grew up in a family that was very neat and tidy. And my father was in the service, he was a police officer, we didn't have a lot of extraneous stuff in the 70s, you know, mm -hmm. it was, there, it wasn't like it is now, where there's so much junk in your house from five below that you, <laughs> your head is going to explode and you don't, you run out of places to put it. Right. Um, but I came from an environment that was always, I don't want to say perfect, but tidy. Yeah. And my daughter, thank God, likes, tidiness we'll go in, if we go to a, into a hotel room she's like oh I want to live here and it's not because it's so nice but because there's not junk everywhere yeah. and not that there is in our house but it does sometimes the monster of stuff yeah. becomes overwhelming and for me I'm a everything in its place and everything away kind of person mm -hmm. and when it starts to creep out I get really agitated. Mm -hmm. So I'm a creative person and I think as a creative person I try to find creative solutions mm -hmm. to those problems and there are a lot of you know nooks and crannies in the house where we've found places for things. We moved from a house, um, we moved to Wayne almost three years ago mm -hmm. from a really large house in in Lansdowne, which we loved, but we moved for the school district. Right. And um, we moved to a house that feels like it's half the size. It's not half the size, but the storage situation in, in our new home changed a lot. And right. we came from a place where we could keep everything and just stick it somewhere and never look at it again in the back corner of the attic right. to having like a crawl space where we have to be very organized and tidy and put the Christmas decorations away so that they're not in the basement in the way mm -hmm. in that storage. Um, but we've found, for me, I get, I can easily get overwhelmed by clutter and so I need to make sure that it's out of sight or I get overwhelmed. Right. And um, I mostly get help um, from my daughter. She likes it, she likes things neat but we do have to ask several times for her to start. And once she does, she does a really good job of yeah. getting her stuff neat. And I mean, in my office, the desk is a mess, but it's my mess and I know where everything is. It's sort of a working mess of piles. I mean, not I shouldn't say a mess, but it's definitely not, 
I don't clean my desk at the end of every day. You know, I said, right. And, and I talk to my clients about, look, you know, Better Homes and Gardens is not coming to photograph this space today, mm -hmm. right? They're not coming to my house. They're probably not coming to yours. Just because, and I think we get wrapped up in this idea of, oh, it, it should look like it's in a magazine or it should look like a Pinterest spread. And I, nobody I know has a house that looks like that on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, yeah, I know what you mean when you say my desk is a mess. It's not really a mess. Um, it's, it's your working, it's your working mess, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but you said a couple of things already that are so important. I, I kind of want to underscore one. You said that, um, you know, what works for you and what doesn't work for you. You know that you're, you have to have things put away to feel like you're in control of the space. Mm -hmm. And um, you also said that your daughter helps, and and I assume your husband too. I've, oh, your he, husband's he wonderful. He helps. <laughs> yeah, my husband. My husband doesn't have a lot. Doesn't generate a lot of clutter. Okay. So I feel like it's my daughter who's generating the clutter with the toys and the things. Yeah. You know, constantly she'll we'll go to the store. Or she'll buy something. She'll have me buy her something, and then just leave the trash somewhere right. in on the on the coffee table. But she's still learning. She's young. Yeah. She's in elementary she's, school. Yeah, she's in second grade. Right. She's she tr the the fact that she when she thinks about it, she doesn't want it to be that way. Yeah. Is is comforting. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so you're giving her the space, you know, you're giving her the tools to say, "Hey, there's cleanup time. There's, you know, we don't have to keep everything that we buy, all of that." And you're also, uh, the other thing that you said that's really important, and I know a lot of the people that I work with get frustrated when they say, ah, oh, I don't have enough space. Well, you said you creatively look for places and spaces to store things so they're not always out in your main space. Mm -hmm. And um, that takes time, but it sounds like it's paying off for you. It is paying off. Um, and I think, so I, I plan ahead. My husband's not much of a planner with those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So I think our only disconnect is that sometimes I'll have a I'll have the plan in place in my head mm -hmm. and really it's just getting the buy in yeah. of how we're gonna maintain the clutter. And and he's very neat mm -hmm. but doesn't pl plan for the extra clutter that that our daughter brought to our yeah, lives. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's our only, you know, we have to balance. Right. He doesn't like to plan things. Yeah. So I think that's our only issue is I need to make sure that I'm thinking a few steps ahead of her yeah. and that everybody agrees that this is how it's going to work. Yeah. And and that's harder than the clutter control, I think. Right. Well, that's communication, right? Mm -hmm. It's a good thing you're in the communication world, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, music, music is a form of communication, mm -hmm. right? Um, and unfortunately or fortunately, whatever you think about it, that what you just described is pretty much still culturally how we operate, mm -hmm. how most, not everybody, but how most households operate in the U.S. Um, and I think really, truly, uh, in a lot of sort of Western countries, there's still this idea that mom is going to take care of all the extra stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, mom's going to sort of maybe not do everything, hopefully not do everything, as you're, you know, describing. You, you really need buy-in. You need other people to help. Everything can't be on mom's shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, but mom still does a lot of the planning and uh, making sure that everybody else is kind of picking up skills, right, learning mm -hmm. how to organize. So I appreciate you going through mm -hmm. all of that. Um, I wanted to circle back around to um, the, you know the the idea of the house and the and the, you you have a you have a regular sized house. Mm -hmm. It's not tiny. It's not huge. It's I know it's regular sized. Um, and you said that uh, you're actually doing some work in the kitchen. Yes, we are renovating our kitchen. It is the house was built. Uh, pre-depression it's 1930 31 mm -hmm. and uh, it has its original kitchen with some you know handyman the the people we brought bought the house from uh, did a lot of their own work in the house mm -hmm. including a, a second story bump out it was a cape and it, it has a little addition on the second floor now nice. um, but the kitchen one of our biggest things moving 
we hated our kitchen <laughs> in our old house. And I was like, all right, we're gonna have a new kitchen. This is gonna be awesome. It is the same exact cabinets oh. from 1930 <laughs> that we had in our last house, which for that house was like, probably the second kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just shrugged my shoulders and said, "This, I, I can't believe it, but mm -hmm. here we are and we'll deal with this later. So you're undertaking a new kitchen? We're getting a new kitchen. Okay. Um, my husband is doing the demo, but everything else is being done uh, by a contractor and well, my husband paints too. Mm -hmm. He's a house painter, so he'll do the painting um, after the fact. But we're only responsible for demo and paint, and everything else will be done by people, which Excellent. is not really what our lifestyle is like. But I'm I'm very thankful that that's how this yeah. is going. That's great. Um, so, but do you it, have any ideas for us? I know a lot of people would like a new kitchen or um, are thinking about maybe doing their kitchen. It's a big project, right? That's a lot of organization. Even if you're not doing the hands-on work, there's a lot of organization that goes into it. And I'm super excited that I'm going to maybe be able to help you because my new book on organizing kitchens is coming out oh. actually in two or three weeks. So by the time this airs, people will be able to um, to get their hands and on our that. our kitchen is supposed to be done on November 6th. There so. you go. It's perfect. Actually, my <laughs> book's coming out November 5th, so I'll make sure yeah. that you have a copy. But back to um, you know making sure that it all works right. It's, it's getting your kitchen done. It's an organizing project. So mm -hmm. maybe give us some tips on how you are actually organizing the project or things that you're going to make sure are in your kitchen mm -hmm. so that it helps you to stay organized. Well, I'll have to admit that we have a design Perfect. who's handling most of that. Um, That's a big tip number one is get somebody who knows how to do this. I feel like if I had all the time in the world, I could totally do this. But I knew that at this time of the year, yeah. and, and really at this point in my life, any time of the year, yeah. I, can't, I can't handle the nitty gritty details of you know, making sure that the counter guy is there when he says he's going to be and making sure, you know, we had the township approval, which the contractor handled. And I, I knew that if I wanted it done, I was going to have to give up my control freak aspect of those things. And I'm really glad I did. So I have a saying that goes along with what you just said. One of my favorite sayings is just because you can doesn't mean you should. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that? Absolutely. <laughs> But because I am creative, I'm sure I would have come up with a beautiful design. I mean, I had toyed with some of the online, the IKEA module and mm -hmm. some other kitchen design modules. And um, I came up with the footprint. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, I didn't show the designer. And she came up with the same footprint, which mm -hmm. just sort of was confirming for me. Yeah. But I didn't, need to, I didn't need to be in charge. There you go. All right, so that's a huge tip for taking on the project. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any fun things that are going to be built into the kitchen that are going to help you stay more organized? Um, the pantry, it's it's a small kitchen. I think it's 11 by 9. Yeah. Um, but the pantry shelves all roll out, that sort of thing. Perfect. Uh, we got our first grown-up adult refrigerator, which <laughs> is a French door side by side, and that already came. I actually ordered that early, and I ordered the I did order the appliances myself. Good. Um, but to open the doors and see the food at eye level, just that made my day. There you go. We have we'll have a garbage disposal for the first time since I in my house that I grew up in we had one and mm -hmm. I and for some reason in every random house or apartment that I've been in right. there's never been one. I'm I, so I guess that some the, the appliances and mechanics are making me excited right now cuz yeah. really I can't picture the cabinets unfortunately. <laughs> but the designer was really experienced and she, you know, thought out some you know, there'll be a place for tall um, baking sheets. Mm -hmm. And so she found little nooks and crannies and spaces so that we wouldn't have to balance cutting boards and those sorts of things. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I, I'm loving this, like more, more <laughs> of this. Right? And, and we talked about open shelving mm -hmm. and things like that, like for cookbooks, which right now I have in our office slash library. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't need to be on display. I'd rather have the cabinet space in a small space that we could actually 
get all of the things that are right now scattered around the house, not because of the renovation, but because the, the cabinet, we'll have an entire extra wall of cabinets than we have right now. So, you know, some of the special plates can go on high shelves instead of being stored away in the basement. Just to have all of the foods, all of the cooking stuff in one room yeah. at this point will be great. And, and we needed the extra cabinets. So that we won't have an eating me. kitchen. Yeah, that amazes me how often people are just sort of willing to live with um, the idea that half of their kitchen lives in the basement or in the garage. And they know that the mice are there from time <sighs> to time. Or, you know, they know that, um, you know, it, it's, not, it's not the situation that they have in their kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's just the basement is where things go to get forgotten. So I'm, glad, I'm so excited for you mm -hmm. that you'll have the kitchen things actually in the kitchen again. I am. We never planned. We have a beautiful um, round dining room table. It's small. Mm -hmm. But it... Um, it suits us and we should have, my plan was that we were going to eat in the dining room and somehow we did put a kitchen in the table, a, a table in the kitchen when we moved in mm -hmm. and somehow that has just become the space where we gravitated toward and then my daughter started doing homework on the dining room table and it's, we're reclaiming it. Okay. We're reclaiming it. She has a desk in, on the second floor now um, and things are changing. <laughs> But it does feel weird. I do feel a little bit strange about our little Leave It to Beaver kitchen now, though, that we have sat at and had dinner at for two years, that that'll be gone. So you, are you integrating those two spaces, the kitchen and the dining room? Um, one, a half wall is coming out, so there'll be counter with bar stools on the dining room side, mm -hmm. yeah. but, um, but there won't be a table yeah. proper in the kitchen anymore. Yeah, so that's a kind of a small tweak um, mm -hmm. that's gonna make a huge difference mm -hmm. to actually how you're using probably your entire first floor. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. And what about a pantry? Do you have a new pantry space coming in? No, the, the pantry is just, there's a tall, um, cabinet between the refrigerator and the wall mm -hmm. that will be pantry, but it'll be bigger than what we have now. There you go. So my husband does, actually, I'm for talking about organization. My husband does all the food. Awesome. So he goes food shopping and he cooks. And he spent a lot of time in Europe. So mm -hmm. he's, he'll, he'll go to the market every day because it's sort of ingrained. Mm -hmm. So we don't actually store a lot of food in the house, which I think is good because things end up in the back and either wasted or things that I buy end up not getting used yeah. because I don't cook them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I just threw, we're, we're now having, because the demo starts tomorrow, I was getting some of the last things out of the kitchen this mm -hmm. morning and I ended up throwing food away, which kills me. I kind of want to like underscore this part of the show because I see that so, so often is the throwing out of the food or people buy food with good intentions because it's supposed to be a healthy food, mm -hmm. but they don't, they don't like it. They mm -hmm. don't normally eat it. And so they forget it and it goes bad. And, um, you know, some of that food could have gone to a food pantry if they'd have gotten to it earlier. Mm -hmm. It could have gone to, you know, a charity food pantry and somebody else could have enjoyed it or just save the money and don't buy it. Or, you know, like you, you have a situation, lucky you, with your husband, you can say, here, here, honey, I bought extra kidney beans. Can you do something with them? Right. You know, it's, again, that communication. And all of that, people think of organizing as, you know, what inserts you have in your cabinets or hiring an organizer to come over. And, yes, you can do all of that. But communication is a huge part of staying organized, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So, um I wanted to go back just one second. I, I could talk about your kitchen all day, <laughs> but I wanted to talk about um, too the fact that you you uh, have these trips that you take with your students mm -hmm. and um, overseas, right? We uh, we have an international trip to Europe every other year, um, and this year in the off year, the women's choir. Though it's the choirs are split. There's a women's choir and a men's choir, which is traditional at Villanova. Mm -hmm. So. I and some other people would love to have a mixed choir, but these traditions hold strong mm -hmm. and nobody wants to nobody wants to infringe on anybody's traditions. Mm -hmm. So we have a women's choir and a men's choir. That's fun. And um, the women and they do go to Europe together every other year. Um, so that's a big project. Again, it's huge. you know, organizing. We're talking about space in your kitchen, but you're an or whether you give yourself credit or not, I'm giving you credit today for being an organized person. You have these things going on that really take organizing skills and putting together an international trip, not just for yourself. That's that's 
challenging enough for a lot of people, but coordinating, you know, dozens of other people mm -hmm. on an international trip. Do you have any tips on like what you do on a major project like that to keep yourself sane? Um, you you have to have a timeline and stick to it. There you go. And uh, for me, the thing that sidelines me more than anything is surprises. Mm -hmm. I don't like being blindsided. I don't like surprises. And I just make sure that, you know, a year in advance, mm -hmm. we're engaging. It, it, it does have to be a tour company because of logistics of some things in Europe. But I also have to I have a lot of responsibilities to the university in organizing the trip. Mm -hmm. So for me, a lot of the stress of the trip is getting everything I need to the Villanova lawyers who oversee everything, mm -hmm. risk management. Mm -hmm. um, and it's risky sending 60 kids to Europe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of paperwork. There are a lot of forms and things that need to get filled out, right. registering with the State Department, all, all sorts of things that take time. But there again, like in your kitchen, it sounds like you are actually either hiring somebody to manage the travel logistics mm -hmm. um, or you are um, you, you're, you're bringing in other team members like the lawyers to make sure that you've got all of the organizing mm -hmm. details lined up. You're still responsible, right? right. So you, you don't get off the hook <laughs> because you have other team members helping you. And we're saying team members, but there it's an informal team that kind of comes together right. right works on this project and then um you wait i guess for another two years to put mm -hmm. another project together well like that, right and then in my in the off year the students do a domestic tour i okay. and domestic because this year we're going to montreal for them oh. domestic means we get on a bus right and for an international means we get on a plane yeah so our domestic tour to canada Right. is uh, happening in February mm -hmm. and that the student we don't have a tour company for uh -huh. and that's a spot where we're mentoring the students about getting venues, mm -hmm. reaching out to churches, trying to find places to sing mm -hmm. because it's not you're not just going on a trip, you're performing. Right. And there's a lot of pressure around that too and and having viable venues. I mean, we've mm -hmm. with the Villanova students, we've sung at the Vet, we've sung mass at the Vatican, we've sung mass at St. Stephen's in Vienna. Mm -hmm. Part of it what makes it easy is the university's name. Thank mm -hmm. Thank goodness, because in the Catholic world, that's really recognized. Right. Um, but it's to find places that are worthwhile to sing that will be full, that mm -hmm. will feel like worthwhile venues for the students is really hard. Right. And that's one of the biggest reasons to have a tour company, because they, they kind of have the hookup. If I was just a random person calling the Vatican saying, hey, can my choir sing mass there? It doesn't usually work. Right. So again, just a ton of really great organizing tips and super interesting to find out what you do here in the community. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just so grateful, Christine, that you came on and you know shared not only what you're doing with Villanova, but also learning about your kitchen. You're gonna have to keep me posted <laughs> with that. So Penny tile, yeah. that's my creative touch. Penny tile, love it, we'll talk more after. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for tuning in today to Organizing Elephants on Radnor Studio 21. See you back here next time.